very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to to thank you uh, for the director of the course uh, for kind invitation. Also, thank you, Mr. President. And I will now <clears throat> say a few words about left main disease, how to evaluate and when to intervene, because we know that uh, finding of left main disease is life-threatening condition on and geography, so we should make an effort to estimate properly and to make a right uh, decision about the treatment of the disease. Because uh, angio is uh, sometimes very hard to, to say, is it uh, not to uh, overestimate or underestimate uh, left main stenosis. Uh, according to the latest uh, guidelines of uh, revascularization, we know that uh, left main diseases uh, 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 should be uh, revascularized if the stenosis is equal or more to 50. But also we have to have documented ischemia or hemodynamic relevant lesions uh, defined by FFR or IFR. Uh, so how to evaluate? Because uh, sometimes these two pictures uh, seem alike and we don't know if there is some functional significance of these uh, changes in stenosis. But we have to take all relevant information when making a decision. So patient demography, bystander coronary artery disease symptoms, evidence from non-invasive testing, and also vulnerable morphological characteristic of the uh, stenosis. So uh, to, to go from the beginning uh, with the coronary flow reserve, we know that coronary flow reserve, low uh, increase of uh, coronary flow uh, because of dilatation and microvascular uh, uh, network. And uh, that is the, the uh, way that uh, we can, uh, that uh, heart can uh, uh, respond to increased cardiac metabolic demands. So we know that coronary flow reserve above two are normal values, but uh, below is a problem and uh, maybe it could uh, tell us about uh, microvascular disease or uh, coronary stenosis. Uh, but with the fractional flow reserve, we are focused on the lesions. So uh, fractional flow is a fraction of flow that is still possible in the presence of coronary stenosis and uh, actually fractional flow uh, reserve is gold standard for estimation severity of the left main disease. But to go back to coronary flow uh, reserve and coronary flow that depends on this, as you can see, uh, uh, road network, we know that uh, coronary flow reserve uh, uh, unique uh, epicardial uh, resistance and fractional flow reserve and microvascular resistance. So the answer of the coronary flow reserve uh, and uh, uh, is unique. So uh, it uh, accounts for stenosis and for microvascular resistance. Uh, so here we have similar anatomy and different functional significance in these two pictures on epicardial artery. You can see that uh, at, the, at the left side or the right side is the, the stenosis that seems more severe, but the fractional flow reserve is uh, good, unlike this other that looks better uh, on the eyeballing, but the fractional flow reserve is less. According to the last uh, editorial, in European Heart Journal from Lance Gold and Niles uh, Johnson, they said that we should take uh, into account both of these methods, so relative coronary flow reserve and also fractional flow reserve. And according to these graphs, you see that uh, the best cumulative events have the patients with the 
normal fluctional flow reserve and normal coronary flow reserve, while at the red uh, point, there is a low fractional flow reserve and low coronary flow reserve, and this uh, patient has uh, <clears throat> more events. But uh, we have also this uh, discrepancy between fractional and coronary flow reserve. When fractional flow reserve in, is high uh, and uh, coronary flow reserve is uh, uh, low, that could indicate uh, microvascular disease. But on the other hand, that is uh, very uh, strange something, uh, fractional flow reserve could be low, but uh, the coronary flow reserve is high. And this on this graph at the right side, you can see that this line uh, has the, the worst prognosis because uh, it is said that uh, relative coronary flow reserve in that case indicated heterogeneity of flow and uh, shear stress and actually indicate instability of the plaque. So these uh, are uh, both uh, these indices are uh, adding us for uh, risk stratifying coronary artery disease. And uh, <clears throat> concerning left main disease, uh, uh, as we know that fractional flow reserve is a gold standard, but uh, instantaneous wave free ratio uh, now is uh, on the road and uh, you can see that we have uh, this uh, good correlation in these two methods. Sometimes there are discrepancy when it is low uh, ejection fractions of the left ventricle. But the measurements are re reliable. IFR had good correlation uh, and match with the FFR. Diagnostic performance of the IFR is similar in stable and acute coronary syndrome patients and the presence of future stenosis downstream of target immediate stenosis has less impact uh, on the IFR comparing to the FFR. So here we have global strengths and weaknesses of these uh, two methods. So we know that for left main stenosis, FFR has long-term evidence for the randomized trials uh, and observational studies. IFR uh, has a strong medium-term evidence from um, trials, but in non-left main patients, and uh, less the influence that is expected from the distal disease. Weakness from, uh, of the fractional flow reserve in estimating left main is this gray zone that we don't know and don't have uh, enough evidence for uh, revascularization when the FFR is in the gray zone uh, and influence of the distal disease also and the microcircular response uh, on the, this method. And for the IFR that is on the road, we have only limited evidence from one observational study in left main patients. Also, we can estimate uh, coronary stenosis and have some insight in coronary vessel human were uh, with the intravascular imaging techniques such as IVOS that is uh, often used uh, during the, the left main estimation. And uh, in this meta-analysis, we have the two, uh, <clears throat> two studies uh, that took uh, in account IVOS on left main. And uh, according to this, uh, we have uh, in uh, left main, uh, accurate correlation between IVOS minimal luminal area and FFR. And according to this is a minimal uh, luminal area about six millimeters or uh, 5.4 that uh, indicate that we can safely defer a patient from revascularization. And other technique that uh, will be obviously used in the future more than uh, today's OCT, uh, when we can look at the plaque and uh, actually uh, have insight of the instability, uh, um, just uh, to finding features of plaque instability. As you see in this case report of 
Al Nurani, uh, we have uh, they have in their patient a uh, very good uh, fractional flow reserve at the left vein, but uh, plaque has this indices of uh, uh, plaque instability, like small endothelium uh, rupture, erosions, uh, minor white and red thrombi, large subluminal lipid pool with reduced cap thickness and clustering of microphones beneath the cap surface. Uh, surface. So the revascularization and this finding could change our final uh, decision uh, in spite of good uh, fractional flow reserve. And uh, as I'm non-invasive cardiologist, I will uh, say a few words about the non-invasive method could, uh, that could add us in um, uh, taking care of the patient, follow up this patient with uh, this critical uh, uh, disease. Uh, so we have transthoracic measurement of coronary flow. Uh, equally, we uh, do this uh, methodology just as for fractional flow reserves. So uh, with hyperemic tests with adenosine, we try to increase flow in uh, LAD. And uh, if the coronary flow is above two, then it's... Uh, result is good and the patient is on the safe side so we can defer uh, our invasive intervention. Uh, Translastic Doppler echocardiography coronary flow reserve right, show good uh, correlation between uh, with the FFR so we can use it uh, in the, there is a lot of study nowadays uh, that prove the usefulness of uh, transferatic Doppler echo uh, measuring coronary flow reserve. And also we have a good uh, correlation between sensitive uh, stenosis severity of the uh, LAD uh, circumflex artery and right coronary artery and the uh, uh, coronary flow reserve, as you can see uh, on this slide. Uh, also prognostic uh, role of the coronary flow reserve is excellent because uh, if the coronary flow reserve is above two, then the patient have good prognosis um, without uh, events. And it was proven in a more study and recently in a Jack published study of uh, Jumpy and uh, colleagues uh, so you can see that uh, most event has the patients with uh, low coronary flow reserve and also positive stress echo test. And uh, here I will uh, present our paper uh, that we did on left main disease, prognostic value of preserved coronary flow velocity. Uh, we have these ambiguous uh, findings of the left main that uh, you have to judge and see if it is uh, hemodynamically significant and what to do uh, with this patient. And as you can see in this patient, we have uh, low coronary flow reserve uh, and similar on angio we have a good uh, coronary flow reserve. We had uh, in our study group included uh, 81 patients and here you can see in geographic finding. So, so uh, 50 of them have isolated left main, uh, 15 of them has left main and LAD and 14 has two vessel disease without LAD and two only three vessel disease. And you can see that the patient with a high uh, coronary flow reserve above to whenever was uh, coronary angio had a good prognosis. It was for around uh, 96 months, so for several years. And uh, <clears throat> so, in conclusion, I will uh, I will say that non-invasive echo might be used as a valuable additional and alternative diagnostic tool in assessing functional significance of left main stenosis. Uh, and uh, patients with uh, left main stenosis and preserved coronary flow reserve about two uh, revascularization can be safely deferred. But <clears throat> if you don't believe so much in non-invasive <clears throat> echo and uh, non-invasive derived coronary flow reserve, then you can uh, bear in mind this uh, practical clinical implementation. That is, uh, this method is very good to follow up the patient when you 
just had normal FFR and some left main intermediate stenosis. So what you will do for one year, patient will come again to you and he will say what to do with my stenosis, am I safe or not? So you don't have to send him again to ING and to management of FFR, you can use this method. We, we are doing that uh, several, for, for many years really. And uh, you can also, uh, if you done pr primary PCI and uh, you, you notice left main stenosis and um, you, you better know than me, you, maybe you sometimes not convenient to measure FFR in left vein, you put it and uh, for the later. So later you can also use this method uh, for the patient. And also if you have multivessel disease and want, want to follow left main stenosis that is uh, less than 50 intermediate, you can use this method. And it is very useful in centers that do not have FFR capability. Uh, so, but the end for all invasive cardiologists, FFR remains the standard for the evaluation of the intermediates of left main stenosis, and it is easiest way, easiest tool to guide with a good reproducibility, superior diagnostic prognostic value, and uh, the IFR is a method that is uh, on the road for the setting of left uh, main lesion, but we waiting for more data and also CT like imaging method. So thank you for your attention and greetings from Belgrade. Thank you, Professor Dickies, for your excellent uh, presentation on this um, uh, always topical, uh, topical uh, issue. Um, as you know, the decision how to intervene in a patient with left main disease um, Many times uh, we decide in the cath lab yes. about the severity of uh, uh, why. So why I would use uh, CFR and no FFR for the for this decision? No. Yes, but in the case when you uh, have FFR, I, I know it is the best method, but sometimes. <laughs> Uh, in our cat lab, we are in our invasive cardiologists are uh, not in opportunity to measure, or these FFR wires are uh, pretty expensive. So sometimes we have this other way around. They send me the patient and ask for the, the decision with the non invasive coronary flow reserve. I agree that uh, this is safer and uh, of course, proper if you can, everything, but sometimes if you don't have, this is a method that can help you and it is a lie of the cardiologist, I think. And the, on, the, on the other hand, I think that it's a very nice tool for follow-up of the patient. Yes, yes, I think it's... Many times uh, yes. uh, we, say, uh, we say in a patient that uh, after one year, we, have, we perform again a coronary yes. geography, but with this tool, yes. uh, Maybe. Yes, maybe. I think that it is the, 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 the best application maybe for left main disease because it's life-threatening, life but uh, really we have this, um, um, that's why we, we got this paper published because we have 80 patients, we follow them for the four six, to six years and uh, they are really good uh, all that time, just following non-invasive. So I think that this is the proper uh, method that you can follow them up and take care about them. If the patient, another question, if the patient has another lesion uh, in the lady, in the middle lady, 50-60% and uh, a lesion 40% uh, in the left main time. Mm. That is, is a tricky, problem. <laughs> yes, that is a tricky question because you cannot decide which of the lesion is responsible for this uh, decay of the coronary flow reserve. But even in that case, if you have a preserved coronary flow reserve more than two, then you are on the safe side. That means that both these stenosis, even if, if they add their mm, uh, stenotic burden, uh, give you good coronary flow reserve. So, so I think uh, if you have a good uh, coronary flow reserve above two, 2.3, then you're on the safe side. 
uh, it seems that Even it's that. a very nice tool for follow up of the patient. Yes. 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 Congratulations for this excellent presentation. Yeah. I have one question for I have seen and congratulations also for your paper. Oh, okay. um, I'm working also in the field of hypertension. And we know that J-curve exists in patients with stable coronary artery disease. I don't know if you have the data, but it will be nice based on J-curve in your follow-up to see if those having blood pressure higher than 120 or lower than 120, mm -hmm. if the event rate was different. Mm -hmm. Because we know from Clarify Registry and other studies that... Uh, if the blood pressure is higher than 140 or lower than 120, the risk is the same. Mm -hmm. And when we have a stenosis in coronary, in left vein disease, mm -hmm. and you measure the blood pressure here, mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the blood pressure immediately after the stenosis. Mm -hmm. Because after the stenosis, the, the, the blood pressure is even lower. Mm -hmm. So most probably, this could be uh, something uh, that you have to look uh, something new. Yes. Uh, especially because we have left main disease. Mm -hmm. Because probably left main disease, the events are more than having, uh, you know, mid uh, LAD stenosis. Yes. Or, uh, yes, this, yes. This, this could be an option. And probably to see if during the different tests that you are performing with adenosine or acetylcholine, yes. Mm -hmm. If the response is different or ECG changes are different for those having more than 120 or less than 120 blood pressure, mm -hmm. this would be it something. Is, yes, yes, it, it is interesting point. Yes, we we can check and maybe. Otherwise, see. this would be yes. big business. Yes, <laughs> if you will find something yes. in this field with left vein disease. In it's a, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a uh, small number, 80, 81 uh -huh. persons I have seen, uh -huh. but you never know. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I will take care. Yes. Um, uh, uh, yes. Uh, first of all, and I have to thank you cordially for your contribution on this very difficult topic. Uh, quite often in tertiary centers, uh, we face with these questions. Um, I have the, the chance um, to have uh, a good number of patients we have discussed in the past. I have now more than 100 patients referred. The majority of those have been referred uh, by surgeons and especially stavridis. Uh, the patients were referred for surgeons to be operated. And the surgeons having the capability of our activities, uh, they have referred these patients uh, to myself to interrogate uh, the left main performance. Uh, that's the reason I have this number. Uh, uh, I fully agree that uh, for the long-term follow-up, this is a fully justified methodology. Uh, in this cohort, almost 100 patients, for the last 20 years, I've established this method in 2001 in Greece, uh, we have no events. Uh, well, the key component is um, the vast majority of those patients are also have, have become patients of mine. So I follow up them carefully. The LDL is pretty low, the heart yes. rate is well adjusted. So I believe that in this scenario of uh, left main interrogation as the key component for questions, uh, this tool, of course, providing that we do have in the cath lab the initial yes. evaluation with IVUS with uh, the proper uh, uh, adjustment. Uh, it's, it's a very practical and moreover uh, decisive tool to secure the outcome. And also uh, Professor Manoli's uh, suggestion is, is, is very important and I have to look back at my data for adenosine uh, response concerning blood pressure. Thanasis is a very nice question. Uh, so I have, I have to, to, to look it back. And probably uh, we shall be able to provide our data also because these are very yeah. big, very specific data from referrals from surgeons. Yes, yes. yes. Backwards. Is, yes, backwards. 
thank you. Thank Congratulations you. and thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. So, we will continue.